Well, sir, it's late afternoon as we approach the small house halfway up in the next block now. And here on the front porch, we find Mr. and Mrs. Victor Gook and their son, Mr. Rush Gook. Our friends are seated in a row on the top step but one, enjoying temperate breezes and splendid summer sunshine. Listen. When on earth are you going to get around to putting up our porch swing? You said the chains were rested too. By a new one. Isn't that in your department? Well, let's see why it should be. You do all the shopping, purchasing, and huckstering for the outfit. Well, this is hardware, though. More of a man's job. You're the party that bought our new coal cutter. All right. I'll go to Holder Brothers and lug 50 pounds of iron chains. <laughs> I will, Dr. Speech. When? Oh, tomorrow. Well, don't forget. Otherwise, we'll be sitting here on the steps till Christmas like heathens. Mm. Are you pondering over so deeply, little doubt? I'm facing a problem concerning swings myself. Really? It's also a problem concerning Nicer Scott. Nicer? He's a good boy. <laughs> yeah. What is the problem? Well, sir, I'm wondering if I'd be a horrible hypocrite if I made friends with Nicer. I believe we got an understanding. You're to make friends with Nicer and keep friends with Nicer. Yeah, but all that off to one side. No, not all that off to one side. What I got in mind is something else again. Mm-hmm. Thing is, Gav, I don't like Nicer and never will like Nicer. However, right at this particular season, it would be to my advantage to cultivate his goodwill. He has in his possession a large box of chocolate? <laughs> no, not that quite. He has something in his possession you covet? He has something in his possession I could use, all right. What's that? The two trees in his backyard out by the garbage box. Papa is Mr. Clay. I'll explain. Okay. I bumped into Uncle Fletcher this morning on Kelsey Street. Oh, really? How is he? Fine. He never behaved like he was missed. Uh-uh. He hasn't dropped by or telephoned since last week. Said he's been very busy lately. What doing? <laughs> oh, riding around in garbage wagons, I guess. Uh-huh. Well, I'm glad he didn't ask me. It occurred to me once or twice in the last couple of days his feelings might have been hurt last time he was here. Oh, I think so. A person can never tell how he's going to take stuff. Oh. What's this problem you face, Cousin Will? Uncle Fletcher's landlady's got a dandy hammock she brought down from Dixon. Yeah? I understand it's a peach. Big soft headrest, long fringe, plenty of room for two people, strong ropes, and a hey, number one hundred percent high class hammock from the word go. Uncle Fletcher offer King Louis? Yes, he did. We got no place to put any hammer. No, we haven't. And neither has Miss Keller. That's why Uncle Fletcher offered us the use of it for the summer. I begin to add two and two together and get nicer Scott. Yeah, nicer Scott. Those two trees in Scott's backyard out by the garbage box are exactly the right distance apart for a hammock. You could search this wide world over and never Mm, find it. No, I don't think so, Rush. Big pardon? I'm not such arms around the neck chums with Miss Scott. I'd feel like asking a favor like that. Like what? Requesting the use of their backyard. A hammock, ma'am, is a wonderful thing. Yes, I know. Very comfortable. An individual can sprawl out and relax till you made the chunk. Hammock is nice, all right. I was thinking I could cultivate a beautiful friendship with Nicer to where he'd be glad to offer them two trees a hit. No... Other people's backyards is a horse of a different color. It's all right to borrow a cup of sugar or a dab of butter and like that often neighbors, but the use of their backyards is something else again. And with Miss Dot Chili the way she is, the whole business is out of the question. Might possibly work out with Miss Donahue if she had trees the right distance apart for hammocks, but I'm afraid I'd have to draw the line at Miss Scott. Uh-huh. I was apprehensive you'd feel that way. Mm-hmm. Still and all, though, a fellow hates to let the chance of laying in a hammock slip through his fingers. Nobody else around here got a yard with suitable trees? Uh uh-uh, uh, not a soul. Spurn and Pago's Aunt May's got suitable trees, but she lives way to heck and going out on Morris Avenue. Maybe you better just forget it then. Hammock could certainly be swell this summer. Have you sounded out nicer on the matter, sir? Yes, I have. What was his reaction? About what you'd expect. I told him about it this noon, and a while ago when I caught the alley, he was standing out in his backyard with an axe. Axe? He was staring intently at one of the trees. Hmm. His idea was to terrify me, see? He wanted to give me the impression he was playing with the notion of chopping down one of the trees. Oh. See, chop down one of the trees, of course, it'd remove all hopes for a hammock. Hmm. Well, couldn't you and Nicer work out a deal on a cooperative basis? How do you mean, that? Cold-blooded, down-to-the-bone business. Undiluted by the milk of human kindness. I don't catch you. Well, you have a hammock. Nicer has the location for a hammock. 
Hammock and location are each worthless without the other. Couldn't an arrangement be set up whereby the two of you could pool your assets and obtain something for your mutual benefit? Hmm? I have this in mind. You lay in the hammock on Monday. I should lay in the hammock on Tuesday. You lay in the hammock on Wednesday. I should lay in the hammock on Thursday. And so forth. Hmm. Neither guy could feel obligated to the other. What would you think of that, Mom? Well, I couldn't ever bring myself to ask me stop for the use of her backyard. Well, she'd be enjoying the use of your hammock, though. Be me asking a favor. Yeah, I suppose. Sure. Then there's also the angle Uncle Fletcher. What angle's that? If I accept the hammock and find a place to put it, he expects to lay in it considerable. You say so? Yeah. Uh, satisfactory schedule could still be worked out. Establish an understanding with Uncle Fletcher... Whereby he's at liberty to lay in the hammock every day in the week between the other hours. Other angles, too, Gus. Yeah? My friends, nicest friends. My relatives, nicest relatives. You and Mom's guests. Mr. and Miss Scott's guests. Would they all expect to lay in the hammock? Well, wouldn't they? I haven't considered that aspect of the situation. Mom's tell Miss Kreider calls frequently, and about three out of every four times she calls, she has to lay down on a kind of a headache. Wouldn't it be natural for Mom to say... Miss Kreider, go outdoors and stretch out in our hammock a few minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I doubt if I'd say that. Be natural for you, too. And then, Gov, there's Hank Gutstock. He likes laying down better than eating dinner. If he found out you were the proprietor of a hammock, he'd be on hand every afternoon. Mm-hmm. Then there's Miss Scott's brother. He's in town a lot. And all my friends, Nellie Clark, Bluetooth Johnson, Brucey Davis, Leroy Snow, Leland Richards, Russell Duncan, Milton Wells, Cracky Otto, whole slew. That hammock will resemble a can of sardines on brisk days. Uncle Fletcher's landlady will be another party that'll expect to enjoy it. After all, it's her property. Mm-hmm. If you and she visits us from Carberry this summer, she'll want to use it. Miss Stembada might want to stretch out for a snooze occasionally, Mom. And Miss Brighton and Miss Trover and Miss Heddles and Miss Healy. And then there's Nitra's pals. Ed Hoggle, Scissor Neck Edwards, Bill Beasley, Fat Morris, Wilbert Stan. You see, that hammock will resemble a can of sardines on brisk gate. <laughs> oh, big pardon. Didn't realize anybody else was in here. Speak no more about it. Let me introduce myself. My name is Mr. Harrison. Uh, my name is Mr. Brown. Glad to form your acquaintance. Shake hands with my friend, Mr. Kilgore. Hmm, thought we was the only ones in this hammock. Not at all. My cousin William's underneath here someplace. I know the uh, feet of the brown octopus belong to my Uncle George. <laughs> <laughs> no, but all jokes smothered and forgotten. It presents quite a problem. I'd forget the whole thing, Willie. Oh. On top of my objection to asking Miss Scott for the use of her backyard this summer, I'd also hate to be responsible for somebody else's property. Oh. Another thing, our family's always been unlucky with hammocks. Unlucky? Your grandfather fell out of one in Stanwood, Iowa, and broke his collarbone. My cousin Robert fell out of one in St. Paul, Minnesota, and smashed his thumb to where he had to give up playing the violin. Uncle Fletcher himself fell out of a hammock once. Got a goose egg on his forehead big as my shoe. Oh. Of course, I don't make anything superstitious out of that or anything, but, you know, no offense in waving the red flag at the angry bull. Oh. So, take it all in all, maybe you... Better thank Uncle Fletcher for the hammock very kindly next time you see him and say you're afraid it won't work out. Uh, Don't you think so? Okay. I like the notion of a hammock out in Scott's backyard and a good brisk day. <laughs> a lot of people ask it, you mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> Darn it, I never knew this hammock was occupied. Perfectly all right. Call right in. I'm Mr. John Williams. I'm Mr. Sam Jackson. Meet my son, Harry. Where is he? Down underneath here someplace. Oh, Harry.